Hey, welcome to Agile Avengers YouTube. Today, Amy and I are going to be chatting about the difference between Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches. Now, I think generally people have worked with Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches in their corporate environments or their team environments, but sometimes there's confusion between the two roles and what each role actually needs to do and what each role looks like. And often there's loads of different nuances in how different organizations do the different roles. So we're going to have a bit of a chat about the two roles and we're going to talk about some of the, the key points, the key differences, the key questions. Um, so Amy, why don't you kick us off by telling us what is a Scrum Master and what do they do? Great question. Um, I think firstly, <clears throat> it varies massively depending on your organisation, the teams you work with. Um, people perceive a scrum master to be a different thing. Um, anyone who's ever looked at a scrum master role or job adverts will notice that they are written very differently depending on, on where you're looking. Um, for me, a scrum master, a scrum master's role is about, um, creating the best environment to make the team as effective and efficient as possible. Um, that can be anything from coaching them on agile ways of working, facilitating retrospectives, um, other um, ceremonies as well. They could coach individuals. They could facilitate um, learning for people as well. So they might decide to do additional workshops on how to write better user stories, things like that. Um, but it all comes for me under the umbrella of how do we make this team as efficient and effective as possible in the way they work? And going back to just very quickly, proper basics for a scrum team. Yeah. <clears throat> three roles. How does a scrum master compare to the other two roles yeah. in a scrum team? Okay, so product owner. Um, product owner predominantly sets the vision. Um, they will help with things like defining the backlog. And they basically talk about what the team are going to deliver. Um, the Scrum Master helps with the how, so how the team works together to achieve those goals. And then you have the, the development team um, or the Scrum team. Um, and they're the people who will actually pick up that work and, and create whatever it is they're creating for their end customer um, and then deliver it. Now let's look at... Agile coach. Yes. So we've talked about Scrum Master. Scrum yep. Master is responsible for the how. They work with a team, ensure that they can be the best they can be. They they coach the team in the Scrum yep. values. And so Agile coach, what does an Agile coach do? Um, very similar, but on a wider scale. So they'll be, they'll be coaching multiple teams, um, working quite closely with the Scrum Masters and the product owners, um, potentially also working with tribe leads um, and other people within across the tribe. Um, to do very much the same as a Scrum Master does, but like I say, on a wider scale. So they'll be helping with the tribe level events. That could be things like the Scrum of Scrums. Um, that could be some of the tribe level reviews they'll be working with the leadership on. Um, and they might be quite heavily involved in any quarterly planning that happens, sometimes known as um, QBR processes, sometimes known as PI planning if they're working in SAFE. Um, I think the big thing to note is that depending on the size of the, the tribe and also the maturity of the teams, the Agile coach could have anywhere from two teams that they support up to a whole tribe of teams, so 10 different teams. Um, what we generally say is for that uh, is for new teams, when they're first kind of kicking off and spinning up, we would want um, uh, an Agile coach to be just supporting two, maybe three teams to really get them in a good place. They'd be working very closely with the Scrum Masters and they'd be quite hands-on um, right at the beginning. And then gradually over time, as the Scrum Masters and the, and the POs and the teams become more mature, they'd be stepping back. And then it's okay that they're not there, you know, in all the ceremonies. They won't be facilitating things day to day. Um, but again, that does depend on the organization, the size of the tribe, um, the wider kind of setup and the and the agile framework that the organization is following as well. OK, so Scrum Master is looking after one to two teams yep. and coaching one to two teams, yep. a bit more hands on, a bit more practically involved. The agile coach is still coaching agile and yep. coaching Scrum and the framework, but across multiple teams and we call, for those that don't know, we call multiple teams often a tribe. So a collection of teams is called a tribe. So the Agile coach is working across, you know, a, a bunch of different teams versus the Scrum Master being focused on one or two. Yes. So yeah. what would you say, what would you say makes a really good Scrum Master? Really good Scrum Master. Um, I think they absolutely have to have, well, firstly, they, they need to have the Agile kind of mindset, the growth mindset, um, fundamental um, to them being successful in their role. 
they need to be very aware of what their team need. Um, you could be a brilliant scrum master with one team and you could move to another team and find it really difficult because the teams are very different and they need different things and therefore you have to adapt your approach. So um, from a people point of view, you need to be able to understand what they need, how they work and how to get the, the most out of them. Um, there's some real basics that you need to be able to be good at as well. If your team's using JIRA, you need to know how to use JIRA. Um, and you need to be pretty good with it as well. Um, if they're, you know, if they're just using a physical board again, you need to be um, quite good with the visual, visualization, keeping on top of things like that. Um, so I think it it depends on the team. But some basic things that I think that I focus on when I've been a scrum master is coaching, um, <clears throat> team level coaching. So are we asking the right questions in the retrospectives? Are we making sure that every voice is heard? Are you aware of which people in your team might dominate a conversation and, and how to um, stop that and, and make sure the other voices and the other people feel comfortable as well? Are you fostering psychological safety within that team? Um, is everybody engaged and on board with everything you're trying to achieve? So I think a lot of it is around that. There is absolutely things that I think we need to do as Scrum Masters around how is the team using the data and insights that we're pulling from sprints and how are we mm. using that to make us even better? Um, uh, and yeah, I think it, it's a, it, there's a massive awareness piece and I think self-awareness is a big thing for Scrum Masters. Quite often we forget to retrospect ourselves, I guess, and think about what is it that I've done really well? How do I improve? Um, how do I make myself better so that I can help my team even more? Um, so self-awareness is a huge thing for Scrum Masters. Mm. The data and tools one for me has been something I've, I've realized is even more and more important because yeah. as a Scrum Master, it's there's like the tangible and the intangible results and the culture stuff and the growth mindset is often intangible. For quite a while it has long-term you know benefits which become clear but in the short time it, it's kind of intangible so if you're a scrum master trying to explain to a tribe lead or you know a senior leader how you're you know you're changing the culture they might go that sounds great but how does it help me yeah. achieve my results for this quarter or whatever yeah. so i think for a scrum master being able to be really on it with tools like jira or trello or devops or whatever you're using to show like velocity increases yeah. and show the progress the team are making in terms of we've got really predictable sprints we we can commit to a certain amount of work in a sprint and we know that we're going to be able to get pretty close to that and also to be able to show hey every sprint we've been doing a little bit more we've been doing a little bit more we've been improving yeah. that's really valuable from like a, a quantitative tangible side of things which yeah. i think sometimes scrum masters can struggle with but when you get it it's it's really valuable yeah um what about what makes a great agile coach so oh, same question i was going to ask that to you okay uh great agile coach so i think again there's a lot of similarities but it's on a wider scale i think a big thing for me that i've become aware of more recently is that when you move away from just working with the teams day to day and you start working with tribe leads um predominantly these can be real uh, business people uh, and they will respond in different ways to to what the team would have responded to on um so when you're coaching them and giving them advice and feedback and things like that you have to do it in a certain way um so i think the first thing is, is um adapting the approach and whilst the role says coach agile coach you need to do more than just coach people you need to be able to flip very quickly between i'm coaching this person to now i'm going to give you some advice to now i'm going to be a bit of a mentor to now i'm going to go into kind of a, a teaching type mode and you need to be aware of when to do that and how to do it effectively so it doesn't feel like you're changing roles mm. um, you have to put on a lot of different hats as a coach and i think it's important that you can do them all fairly well we're all going to have strengths across those skills and we can draw upon those strengths more when we need to, but you still need to be able to do all of them. Um, you're working sometimes with Scrum Masters day to day um, and you might be doing a lot more mentoring with those Scrum Masters. Um, whereas with the leadership, you might be doing a lot more advice um, to say, you know, what is it that we need to do? How do we need to change? They might. So your role will change depending on who you're talking to. Um, and and where you are again in the maturity, new teams need a lot more um, advice and and you know facilitate learning. So we teach we teach a lot up front, and then we'd move to a bit more of a um, advice type role. And then right at the end, once those teams are much more mature, we 
predominantly do do, um, a lot more coaching. So again, you have to kind of move quite quickly between them and be aware of how to move as well. Mm. What would you say has been some of your biggest learnings? And I, I, I wanted to say what's been your biggest mistakes as an agile coach, but that's quite <laughs> harsh. So what's like some big learnings that you've had as an agile coach in recent years? Okay. Most recently in the last sort of 12 months or so, um, I think, uh, being able to articulate the value we bring and what we're doing day to day. Um, It's really easy to sit there and say, I've been in this meeting, I've been in this meeting, I've facilitated this, I've facilitated that. And it's like, but so what? So what does that actually mean? How have you helped the Scrum Masters move forward? How have you helped the POs move forward? How have you helped the tribe leave? Whoever it is, Mm. what have you actually done? What value have you delivered? It's a bit like we were talking with the Scrum Masters. There's quite a lot of data that you can draw upon to show the progress you've made. There's less so, there's less data potentially as an agile coach that we don't always look at. It is there and we need to make sure we're using it. Um, but it's very easy. What kind of data are you, are you talking about? Just give us some examples. Okay, so you can, you can use the JIRA data uh, if you're using JIRA or, or DevOps or Azure, whatever. So like velocity, yeah, like epic progress. Five level, right? Yeah, um, yeah. You can also... You know, we've started in maturity assessments. Um, there's a lot of people that start using maturity assessments. So you look at the maturity of the squad and how that's progressing. Um, but what's important is sitting down weekly and thinking, you know, what's happened in my week? What have I done? What does my coaching update look like? Um, and I've recently started doing coaching updates in the last 12 months. Um, and I'm being really honest. At first, I hated doing it. I was like, why do I need to write down what I've done for the week? I know that I've done some good stuff. I know that I've added value. But it forced me into being better at articulating what I've done and actually really focusing on the most valuable thing. Mm. Um, and then think about, so what does this mean for next week? So... I think that for me is quite a big learning and probably the, one of the biggest ones going from a scrum master to an agile coach is actually how are we showing the value we bring day to day in everything that we do. And this probably becomes even more important if you are a consultant or a contracted agile coach in yeah. an organization for a set period of time, because yeah. if you are in-house or you're, you're full-time within a, a company, you might have a longer period of time and you know, in order to get the job done, and you probably have a bit more of the benefit of the doubt on a day to day. Whereas if you are a contractor or, you know, you, you're a self-employed agile coach or you're, a, you know, for a consultancy, you will need to prove to the client and to the, the teams that you're working with, the value that you're bringing, you know, on a week by week and sometimes even on a day by day basis. So actually being able to, like you said, quantify and articulate the so what of what you're doing is really important. Yeah. I know you've had a recent experience of this. Um, so share with us about kind of what it, I think the the change for you going from Scrum Master to Coach when, when that happened, but also um, more so around your learnings as an Agile coach in the last, say, six months. <clears throat> yeah, for me, um, so for me, a big one from 2021 was, was definitely around like a plan for the, having a plan for the plan which is a term I picked up from some, some really smart guys mm-hmm. I've, I've been working with. But when you get into a, an organization, especially if you're on the consultant kind of side of things, you haven't necessarily got the time to sit and observe like you would if you were an in-house or a full-time agile coach or a scrum master. You, know, you, get, you get that breathing space to, to, to learn what's going on and to you know, observe and to get to know the teams. And then at some point you can make a recommendation and start you know doing some work based on what you've observed over your first three months or whatever when you are a, a consultant or, or an agile coach and, and you've gone in you've, you've really got to make tracks like straight away actually you need to be able to show that you you have a plan for your plan so maybe your first couple of months is about observing and and everything else but actually you want to have a plan that articulates hey the value we're going to bring over the first couple of months is getting to know these teams, observing, facilitating where I can, but then drawing up some observations and being able to play that back. Now, even just the very uh, the very task of, of articulating that and capturing it in like a coaching plan or something that you can share with, with stakeholders and, and maybe the wider you know, coaching team around you is really valuable in itself. And actually, sometimes you can, you can trust your judgment and your, your previous experience and you can spot something straight away on week one where you can say, hey, 
let's tweak this or let's try something new here because I've seen this in a previous organization and, and we, we tried this and it works. So you can add value from day one, but there is another element where you will need to wait a few months until you've really um, understood what's going on and maybe coach the team through to some changes rather than you driving changes straight away. So that, that was a big one for me. And then kind of similar to what you were saying, like capturing the so what on a, on a week by week and a month by month basis um, it's really easy to, to do some great things with the teams and coach them through some great transformation and rightly so give them all the credit because they're the ones changing and doing the work. And actually then you can struggle to, to articulate the so what of what you've done unless you've really spent time capturing it. Yeah. And so it's really powerful. I found it really powerful actually um, kind of rolling off a, um, a coach engagement recently to actually do that handover process and in the handover process, it was like capturing all of the key things that happened, the things that I'd contributed as a coach and how that had impacted the teams and hopefully what the teams are going to go on to, to be able to do and to achieve as a, as a result. And so that was probably more intense as an agile coach than a scrum master. Um, whereas generally as a scrum master, you've, you've got more time, especially if you're an in-house scrum master, you've got more time. Yes, you're more hands on a day-to-day, -day, um, but you've got more time to be able to to get those results and you get a bit more of the benefit of the doubt. Whereas as an agile coach, normally a shorter engagement, a bit more intense, um, but it's really important to be able to capture the, the so what's. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then Amy, what would you say, so for a scrum master looking to move into more agile coaching, what would you say that scrum master needs to focus on or develop or be aware of it as they want to maybe progress into a broader agile coach role? Um, I think, first of all, there's agile coaches will vary depending on the size of the organization and what, and what they're doing. So, for example, sometimes they might be referred to as a team coach. They're just working with two or three other teams, coaching those scrum masters across those teams. They might be seen as a, as a lead scrum master because they're supporting those other um, the other areas. Um, you then have an agile coach who'll be working just predominantly with the senior leadership, the tribe level coach. They might be then working across a number of other coaches. You then might also have a master coach um, or a, an enterprise level coach, and they would be potentially working across multiple tribes. They're the, the you know the, the the right at the top of the agile center of excellence, working across multiple tribes. So. What we're talking about here is that is moving from a scrum master to kind of a team level agile coach. Um, that's the kind of the obvious next next step, next jump. So um, what I would say is firstly, get involved with things across your um, your other your other peer of scrum masters. So if you've got um, a scrum master guild, um, a scrum master chapter, whatever that looks like, what can you do to start supporting maybe some of the newer scrum masters? How can you start coaching and mentoring some of those newer people so that you're used to doing that because you will be doing that as an agile coach. The same goes for the POs as well. How can you get more involved with the, with the PO community um, and support them and help them grow? Um, that's the natural, they're two kind of obvious natural ways that you can do it. Um, and I think it's thinking about what that looks like. Um, how how do you get your team in a place where the support you need to give them is less and less every day? The same as an agile coach. As the team matures, the hands-on support your team needs is less. They will always need a scrum master. Um, however, how do you start thinking less about serving your team and your PO and more about serving the wider organization, the wider tribe, whatever that looks like, um, <clears throat> and helping them progress? So it could be um, a lot more facilitation around your scrum of scrums uh, rather than just participating. It could be facilitation around, OK, let's do a tribe level retrospectives. Um, so it's getting used to doing things on a wider scale and putting yourself in a position to be able to do those things. Um, being confident with doing those things as well. Um, there are some things that you can probably do day to day. I would also say that if you've got an agile coach um, or a chapter lead or someone that you can speak to about what you want to do, finding the opportunities to grow is going to be fundamental to getting there. Yeah, definitely. And I know it was my question, but there's only one thing I would add. But I think as a scrum master, you will naturally working with one or two teams, those teams may work using a particular framework, typically yeah. Scrum or maybe Kanban. Yeah. And actually as an agile coach, you need to have a bit of a broader understanding of the different frameworks 
and how to apply them. So it might not just be Scrum, it might be Scrum, Kanban, it could be XP, it could be safe, it could be less. It, you know, so to be an agile coach and have those those broader teams, you need to be prepared for a broader different, you know, broader range of contexts or scenarios where you might need to apply agile slightly differently. And, you know, you'll have different projects and different leaders that want a different approach. And, and so while yes, the fundamentals are the same, you know, the values and principles are the same, the application of the frameworks and the practices might be slightly different and you need to be prepared for that. And uh, I think that was another learning for me over the last year is, is even like to have knowledge and understanding outside of agile about other project management methodologies and because you might be working with a team or a, you know a senior leader who maybe spent their whole career working using prints or you know typical program management kind of style and all of a sudden you know yes you're using agile maybe the organization is brought into using agile but actually to have some knowledge or have a bit of experience or understanding of what does it mean to work using prints too versus agile or what yeah. does it mean to you know to work at using safe versus working in scrum at scale yeah. that's really valuable to have as well. And, and I think it really helps as an agile coach to have that broader understanding, broader knowledge and be able to, you know, apply that in, in the different contexts you're in. Yeah. I guess it's a part of how do you draw upon um, other frameworks to maybe fix problems that you've got? Because mm. frame, whilst the frameworks are there, it is just that it's a framework. It's not a set list of guidance and um, rules that you must follow in the way you work. There will be, mm whatever problem you come up with, whatever thing you're facing, someone's faced it before. So there's something out there to solve it. So the more knowledge Mm. you've got across different frameworks, different ways of working, different experiences, the easier it's going to become to help people solve problems more quickly. Yeah. Another just interesting point off of that is it's really helpful. If you're an agile coach, it's really helpful to align with the other agile coaches in terms of what your your framework, what your playbook, what your method is going to be. If you're coaching agile in different teams or different tribes, you want them to share, generally speaking, you want them to share a common language and a common understanding. And so actually that's another thing that I think is really important as an agile coach is to have a good community with the other coaches, um, talk regularly, agree on framework, agree on the playbook, agree on the language that massively helps having like a, a united front in an organization. If you're doing agile transformation. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, you're going to have one person calling it, a, you know, a squad, one person calling it a scrum team. No one knows what's going on and people start moving between. It becomes very complicated. Very. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anything else? No, I think that's um, I think we've covered it. Broadly. Broadly. Concisely. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you think, guys, in the comments below. Um, social links and stuff in the description. But if you've got any thoughts, any comments, anything you'd like to add or um, anything you want to hear us discuss in future, just drop a, uh, drop a note in the comments and um, yep. we'll reply to those. Give us, a, give us a follow, give us a subscribe um, and we'll see you soon.